your furnace blows cold air, and your air conditioner doesn't. The water seems to go everywhere you don't want it to, and your kitchen and bath haven't been remodeled since the 50s. Well, welcome to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. Kansas City has depended on Dick Ray and Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating and Cooling to solve heating, cooling, plumbing, and remodeling problems for over 50 years. All you need to do is call 576-7798. And now the master plumber with a degree in mechanical engineering is here to help. Here's the potentate of pipes, the Earl of Electricity, the Emperor of Air, the Imperial Poobah of Plumbing, the Grand Toileteer, the Master Plumber, Dick Ray. And good morning. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. I'm here every Sunday from 11 to noon on KMBZ, and uh, hopefully after you listen to this show, you'll know a little bit more about how some of the mechanical things in your house work, or maybe if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, we, uh, we, maybe we will have helped you with one of your do-it-yourself projects. Uh, if you haven't heard the show before, uh, the name of the show pretty much tells what we are, the Home Improvement Hour. We talk about, oh, the mechanical systems in your home, the heating and air conditioning and uh, heat pumps. And I, actually what we talk about is what I do for a living every day. I'm in the heating and air conditioning business, and I'm a master plumber and a master mechanic. That's a fancy word for people that work on furnaces and air conditioners and do a lot of kitchen and bath remodeling. That's exactly what we talk about on this show. So anyway, if you haven't heard us before, welcome to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. And that, of course, is me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and open open up the phone lines early today. Uh, I've I've got some new technology that I think that you'll find interesting that I want to talk about. But right after that, we'll get to the phone. So we're going to go ahead and open the phones a little early today, so that you can grab a phone line while there still are phone lines to grab. All of the lines are open right now. So if you've got a question about something uh, going on in your house or a do-it-yourself project or really anything that I might be able to help with. The phone lines are open right now, and all you got to do is pick up the phone, give us a call, uh, and right after we talk about this uh, thing that I think you'll find pretty interesting, we'll get to the phones. Anyway, if you'd like to grab a line right now, the number is 576-7798. We got plenty of open lines. Later on during the show, that changes, but right now we got plenty of lines. So 576-7798. Now, I think you're going to find this interesting. You know, there there are so many new, neat, new project, products that come down the road just every day, it seems like. And, uh, and new computers and iPhones and I don't know how many iPhones are wear up, iPhone 5 or 6 or whatever. I don't know. They're just new stuff coming along all the time. And... And now this product, it kind of goes along with the Internet, and yet it is, uh, well, anyway, it has to do with heating and air conditioning systems. And, and there's some really practical applications. Of course, this is, you could look at this as kind of a gimmicky thing and say, well, I don't need that. But, but on the other hand, there are some really good practical applications to what I'm getting ready to talk about. And as an example, if you have a... If you have a lake house, say, down at the Lake of the Ozarks or Truman or somewhere, and that house maybe sits vacant much of the winter, you don't use it much in the winter. You're down there in the summer when the weather's nice. And let's say your furnace quits down at the lake house while you're gone on a cold day. Uh, you can end up with a real disaster on your hands. On a, on a cold day, as soon as the temperature in the house drops below 32 degrees, the water lines in your house will start to freeze, and when they break... Uh, you got water everywhere, and you got lots of water damage. Usually, in the in this scenario, it's not just one pipe that breaks either. It's usually a lot of them. And I've seen houses where the furnace quit for some reason while nobody was at home for a few days, and the result was over a dozen broken water lines. And that is an expensive nightmare when you finally discover it. Talk about a mess. Until you've had this happen to you, you have no idea of the amount of damage that is done. I, of course, see it uh, on not on a well not on a daily basis, but I see it frequently because of the business that I'm in. I'm the guy that gets hired to come in and fix the broken water lines, and so many times I've seen the damage that's done. 
you know, when ice forms in a <clears throat> in a water line, the pipe expands where the white where the ice is, and usually the pipe will split open. And when it does, the ensuing leak is it's not just a small drip. We're talking about a major leak, like like full force from a garden hose. And if you have multiple splits and pipes all over the house. Uh, you, you have a real mess as lots of water drenches the carpet and the floor and the sheetrock. And, of course, if you're at home, you're probably going to hear the water spraying out, and you're going to shut the water off fairly quickly before much water damage is done. That's a good thing. But at a lake house uh, where no one is there on a regular basis, it may be days or possibly even longer before a neighbor notices, hey, there's water running out from underneath the garage door and down the driveway. Or maybe the water's running out uh, under the front door. And then your neighbor calls you and tells you that you have a problem. Not good. Of course, by that time, the carpet is ruined and the bottom of the sheetrock walls is ruined and the subfloor is buckled and ruined as well. And you have major damage that can easily run in the tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, you, you may have thought about this possibility in the past and maybe you shut off the main water line to the house when it's vacant. That, of course, will greatly minimize the water damage if you have freeze breaks. But you still will have maybe a dozen broken pipes to repair, often inside of walls and in other places where repair is not an easy job. So anyway, what can you do about this? Well, in the past, you might ask a neighbor to check in on your house periodically, but you hate to impose on your neighbor. And, and after all, how many times are they going to actually check your house? And by the time they find a problem, it may be too late. Well, good news. Honeywell has come out with a new thermostat, which you can communicate with yourself over the Internet and not have to bother your neighbor uh, down at the lake. Now, you may be thinking, man, that sounds complicated and expensive. But, you know, it's not at all, and it's, and it's not terribly expensive either. And it's Honeywell, so it's good quality. Well, anyway, the new thermostat would simply replace your old thermostat at the lake. You remove the old one, put the new one in, and wire it, wire it up the same as the old one. So not usually a big deal to remove the old thermostat and put a new Honeywell in. Uh, the new thermostat does need a 24-volt ground wire to it. But, you know, on most thermostat installations, usually there are extra unused wires going uh, up to the thermostat from the furnace down in the basement. So usually that's not a big deal. So anyway, you mount the new thermostat, and the new uh, thermostat has the capability to talk to you over the Internet via the Wi-Fi that you already have in your lake house. So anyway, here's how it works. You're sitting at home in Kansas City, and it's bitter cold, and you're kind of worried about the pipes freezing at the lake house. So you log on to your computer at home, and via the Internet, you communicate directly with your thermostat at the lake via the Wi-Fi modem that you already had at the lake anyway. And sitting at your computer here in Kansas City, you are able to communicate with your thermostat at the lake, and you can find out what the temperature in the lake house is. And if the temperature of the lake house is below what you know that it should be, now you can call your neighbor at the lake to investigate the problem or call a service person down at the lake to check it out and see what's going on. You just dodge the bullet of expensive broken pipe repairs at the lake. So it's kind of a neat deal in a scenario like that. Uh, you can also change the temperature settings uh, on the lake thermostat via the Internet. I mean, maybe you're getting ready to head for the lake for the weekend and and maybe you ordinarily keep the temperature at the lake house, oh, at, you know, 50 degrees in the wintertime, just enough to keep the pipes from freezing. But you're headed to the lake, and you uh, want the house warmed up before you get there. Well, you can do that, all of that, over the Internet as well, all via your normal Wi-Fi Internet connection at the lake. Uh, your Wi-Fi modem at the, at, at the lake, which you already had anyway, it allows you to talk to your thermostat at the lake and check temperature and then change the temperature settings uh, as well. Well, this is not limited, of course, to lake houses by any means. I mean, you may want one at your house here in Kansas City as well. These days, uh, everything else is connected to the Internet, so why not your thermostat? 
Installation is not terribly difficult ordinarily, and the price isn't outrageous either. Uh, really n- not much, that much more than a regular thermostat. And then uh, next time you go to Colorado skiing in the winter, it uh, might be nice to check in on your heating system back here in Kansas City just to make sure that there aren't any problems and that you aren't going to come back from your ski trip and find out that your house is flooded because the furnace quit. Well, anyway, that's about it. Uh, neat new technology. If you have any questions about this new internet connected thermostat or how it works the phone lines are now open so give me a call right now if you have questions or or of course if you have questions really about anything else call me or if you have a question about something else mechanical in your home or maybe you've got a do-it-yourself project that you'd like to have a little bit of help with and of course i'll be glad to talk about that too Uh, Keep in mind that I do the things that we talk about on this show. I do them every day for a living, uh, and that would include things like fixing and replacing broken air conditioners and furnaces and heat pumps and plumbing repairs as well as kitchen and bath remodeling also. Uh, So anyway, if I can pass on any information to you that will help, I am more than glad to do it. And really all you have to do at this point is, Pick up your phone right now. Give us a call. And once again, the number is 576-7798. So give us a call. This is the best part of the show that we're getting ready to go into now. We're going to spend the rest of the hour talking to folks over the phone. And this is the best part because we're going to be talking about what it is uh, that, you, that you're interested in. So anyway, take the opportunity. Give us a holler. Make this part of the show happen. Uh, We've still got a couple open lines here, so grab them while they're still open. Number is 576-7798. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back to the phone, so give us a holler. This is Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. You have a two-story house, and let me guess, even with the fans running full blast in the summer, it's still miserably hot upstairs. I mean miserable. Hard to sleep at night. Yeah, you could get a window air conditioner, window noisemaker, I call them. They're noisy, expensive to operate, and just look terrible, like a big old wart on your beautiful home. Well, I've got the answer. It's a good-looking, slim, unobtrusive Mitsubishi Electric cooling and heating unit that you can't even hear running. And efficient? Heck, it puts out twice the cooling capacity per dollar spent on electricity compared to your current air conditioner. I've got two at my own home, and they are wonderful. So quiet. They're great for room additions or for any hot or cold spots in your home, too. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating Systems, installed in your home by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. Today's retirees face multiple challenges, including volatile markets and low interest rates. Have you considered what your biggest risk may be? Hi, folks. This is Greg Hadle with the Investment Advisor Iron Hadle Financial Advisors. Have you ever heard the saying, I have too much month at the end of my paycheck? Well, consider this. I have too much life at the end of my retirement portfolio. With the last decade taking its toll on investment and retirement portfolios, many investors are on track to run out of money. And the scariest part is, they don't even know it. For over 30 years, Hadle Financial Advisors has helped people with their retirement planning and investments. Folks, don't leave it to chance. Contact Sean and I, 913-825-2626. Or join us this Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. on KMBZ, 913-825-2626. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Woodbury Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC, and registered investment advisor. Hadle Financial Advisors and Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. are not affiliated entities. Kohler products offer intrinsic quality born of tradition. Skills passed down through generations combined with innovative techniques and timeless design to establish the enduring character for which Kohler is known. There is no substitute for the knowing hand that sculpts the rim of a pedestal lavatory or the eye that precisely measures the thickness of enamel on red-hot Kohler cast iron as if by instinct. The experience is bold. The experience is art. This experience is the bold look of Kohler. See it all at the showroom of Dick Ray, the master plumber. And we're back. Pretty nice weather here lately. Ah, I, I, 
we, we've had plenty of rain here. We, we've been in drought conditions, really, for the last couple of years, and I think we're starting to, <laughs> to get a little bit of moisture back in the ground. Golly, all this snow that we had the latter part of the winter, actually, it was the first part of spring, and now we're starting to get a bunch of rain, so that's a good thing. Uh, it kind of slows down some of our outside work a little bit, you know, but... I don't know. I, 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 you, you may not know this, but I, I spend a good portion of my work day in the office. Probably most of the time I'm in the office. Uh, but but uh, Friday, I got to get out of the office. So we had a job Friday that Jack and I went out and did with digging up a broken fire line. And, uh, and we... we we, we didn't do it a couple of days before that because, I mean, it was just pouring down rain. It wasn't a real emergency thing, but Zach and I went out Friday, and we dug up this fire line. We'd actually been out there the week before and discovered that the broken fire line was right under the 7,200-volt primaries feeding the electrical transformer, and the conduit containing those high-voltage wires was damaged, so we got an electrician in there. Uh, to fix that and anyway we went back Friday and it was, it was really nice weather perfect weather for doing a job like that and I got to get out of the office which is always a thrill for me and anyway Zach and I did a lot of hand digging because this broken fire line was directly under uh, under the conduit that fed the 7,200 volt primaries to the transformer. So we didn't want to get a hold of that with our shovel and end up, you know, that, that could be a bad deal. So we did a lot of hand digging just to make sure we didn't damage anything. We dug what we could with the backhoe very cautiously. And anyway, it turned out well, but it was, boy, it was sure in a tough spot. You know what happened there? And, you know, a fire, this is a six inch uh, diameter fire line, big pipe. Yeah, which fire lines usually are really big like that. So you can deliver a wa- lot of water quickly and get the fire put out fast. And it is amazing to me, those old ductile iron pipes, you dig them up and the pipe looks brand new in the ground. I mean, there's not a speck of rust on it. It's just smooth. It looks like it just came out of the factory yesterday. And yet there'll be a uh, a rust hole in the pipe. And then that's what we found on this one too. There was a rust hole, you know, maybe a inch and a half in diameter and right next to it there was another smaller rust hole and and I've, I've never understood that usually those jobs are fairly straightforward and easy you dig up the pipe it's easy to tell where to dig because the water blasted a hole in the ground right where the leak is in this case uh yeah, it was it was quite a bit more time consuming what happened is the leak was right under the conduit that carried the primaries to the power transformer for the building and this blast of water pointed straight up it broke the force of the water broke the electrical conduit and um and and when it broke the conduit you could see the exposed conductors to the transformer and so anyway that first day zach and i got out of there because we didn't want to you know that's a dangerous situation you don't want to mess around with seven thousand volts we got my buddy Arlen Seville at Teague Electric involved in the job, and uh, the building owner hired Arlen and his crew to come out there and fix the, you know, to fix the conduit and make sure that we were safe electrically. Then Zach and I went out and and dug up the fire line very cautiously and fixed it. And anyways, it's kind of a neat deal. I, it gives me the opportunity to get out of the office, which I'm always looking for an excuse to do that. And anyway, I better shut up because all the <laughs> phone lines are lit up here. And we're going to, we will start out with uh, Mary here. Hi, Mary. What can I do for you? Hi, my name's Mary and I'm from Green Valley. And um, yep. I've got this problem in the middle of the night, in more so in the winter than in the summer. It feels like when I turn the furnace up, I get this like chirping moose call or something it's only for two or three seconds and it wakes me up every night and if i keep the furnace down to around 65 it doesn't seem like it does it but if i turn it up to 72 or something like that it does it all the time in the middle of the night and i don't know if it's my phone lines or my furnace or my heat pumps i have no idea what it is but it's very annoying now you you said a chirping moose call. I didn't I didn't know that mooses made <laughs> chirping noises. I thought those were birds. Is it a 
I mean, a chirp, well, chirp is like chirp, 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 like a bird makes. Is that the kind of noise it makes? Or I, I don't know what kind of noise a moose it, makes. It but just I, makes a noise for about, I'm going to say, four seconds. One, two, three, four. And it's just a horrible sound that wakes me up. It's almost like a, a phone system that doesn't work, or maybe it's a furnace heat pump that doesn't work. And I've called the phone company to see if they're um, scanning the lines or something at night, and yeah. I've had that, you know, taken care of, and they're not doing that anymore. So the only thing I can think of is this my furnace heat pump. I mean, I don't have any idea what you it is. You only hear be. this noise at night, right? Not during yeah. the day? I never hear it during the day. And if you said if you turn your thermostat down to 65 to a lower setting, you don't hear it then? I don't hear it. Uh Uh-uh. But any time I try to get any heat out of the furnace at 1 or 2 o'clock in the night, it wakes me up constantly. Okay. Well, maybe, I mean, when you turn the thermostat down to 65 degrees, probably all you're doing is preventing the furnace from coming on. And so Uh this noise evidently has something to do with the furnace being on and yet the thing that puzzles me is uh, why doesn't it make it during the day because I mean, I, the furnace and the the furnace operates the same way during the day during the night so shouldn't make any difference whether it's day or night yeah. oh man i don't know i mean and it does <laughs> can you tell does it just make the noise when the furnace starts you probably don't know i suppose i think it does i think there's something in I don't know if they have regurgitating valves or anything like that in them, but it seems like it's just when I turn. Um, it doesn't happen during the day. It's just at night, and it's just when the furnace, I think I can hear the furnace kick on, and then it makes that crazy sound. Golly. Does it do it every night if you don't turn the thermostat down? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, what it, I would try to do is to have somebody down there listening uh, go to the thermostat and turn the thermostat to a higher temperature manually so that you're forcing the thermostat to come on then have another person down there standing by the furnace uh, so they're right there. You're going to be able to tell a lot more standing right next to the furnace than you are listening to a noise, you know, from the upstairs. Okay. And if you can catch it in the act and be right there when it's making the noise, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to, to figure okay. out what's you- going on. You don't think it has anything to do with the heat pump? Oh, I mean, it could, yeah. I mean, you, you may be standing down by the furnace and you hear the noise and you say, well, shoot, this not by the furnace at all. It's it's outside the house somewhere. It's out by where the heat pump is. And so then you would do the same thing. Have one person outside by the heat pump and another person inside operating the thermostat. And the person outside might say, oh, my gosh, look, one of those fan blades is bent, and it's making a you know a noise when it hits a shroud when it starts up. But okay. It, but if you can All be right. right there where the noise is, you can tell a lot better what's going on if you can make it okay. happen. And I live in Grain Valley. Is there any people down here that you su- could suggest? Or get- oh, golly. Um, what you might do is call the manufacturer of the people that, you know, that made your furnace and heat pump and ask them who they would recommend in that area okay all right that sounds good okie doke okay thank you you bet thanks for the call mary all righty that opens the line you're you're listening to the home improvement hour with dick ray the master plumber got one line open five seven six seven seven nine eight we're going to take a break for the news and we'll be right back to the phones this is Kansas City's news, traffic, and weather station. This is KMBZ Kansas City. The 11:30 in Kansas City from the KMBZ newsroom. I'm Andrew Yates. Yemen's army says a U.S. drone strike has killed two suspected Al Qaeda militants east of the capital. It's the third suspected U.S. drone strike in less than a week in Yemen. A few hours later, officials say Al Qaeda fighters attacked a military checkpoint in the same area, killing two soldiers. A militant was killed in the shootout. 
Muslim leaders in the St. Louis area say they are pained by the bombing at the Boston Marathon. KSDK TV reports that members of the St. Louis chapter of the Council on American Muslim Relations gathered Friday and said their faith condemns acts of violence and terror. Earlier this week, the group organized an interfaith service at a mosque to pray for victims of Monday's terrorist attack. Now your forecast from staff meteorologist Sally Russell. Mainly cloudy skies with a few widely scattered showers in place for today. Temperatures not bad at all, 65. Clouds overnight lows upper 40s tonight. And then an increased chance for some wet and possibly stormy weather for Monday. A high on Monday, low to mid 60s. Showers will continue into Monday night, upper 30s. Showers likely Tuesday, 45. So it is definitely going to turn cooler again. A high near 55 with some sunshine on Wednesday. I'm staff meteorologist Sally Russell, KMBZ Weather. Right now it's 62 degrees at KCI, 58 at your official weather station. I'm Andrew Yates. Stay connected with 98.1 FM KMBZ and KMBZ.com. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber. If you're like a lot of people and just hate your toilet because it gets plugged so frequently, and if you're at the point where you're saying, I'm sick of this, I want the best flushing toilet known to mankind then you want a Gerber Ultra Flush Toilet. It still only uses 1.6 gallons of water per flush, but that 1.6 gallons of water is stored in the toilet tank under pressure. And when it's released, you've never seen a flush that powerful in anybody's home. It's really dramatic. Often people will put things down toilets and public restrooms that they wouldn't in their own homes, like rags or handy wipes or tampons. Or maybe you have a family member with large, firm stools. Whatever the reason, if you really want the most powerful flush available, you want a Gerber Ultra Flush Toilet. You can see the flush in the live models in my showroom, too. Gerber Power Flush Toilets, installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. This is KMBZ. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber. I've sold Lennox furnaces and air conditioners for almost 40 years and wouldn't even dream of selling another line. When you find something good, you stick with it. And Lennox is the best of the best. The manufacturer that others try to keep up with. In business for 115 years, Lennox has invented most of the significant products in the world of furnaces and air conditioners. Things like the very first forced air furnace to have a blower on it. The very first 90% efficient furnace the first two-speed air conditioner compressor, and the list goes on and on. And Lennox continues to set energy efficiency records that other manufacturers try to keep up with. Basically, the rest of the industry fights to keep up with Lennox's new innovations. They really are the best of the best. Lennox, installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. This is KMBZ. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber. Lots of my customers call me, especially in the winter, complaining of not enough hot water from their water heater. Now, they could install a bigger water heater, but that's expensive. Or they could turn the temperature up on their water heater, but that's dangerous. They could get scalded. Well, good news. I can install a Cash Acme tank booster on your existing water heater, and you can end up with about 50% more usable hot water. That's 50% more time in the shower. The tank booster allows you to turn the temperature on your water heater up to a higher temperature setting without the danger of scalding because it automatically tempers the water to a safe temperature. Tank booster is built by the 100-year-old Cash Acme company, synonymous with quality. Tank booster, installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. Opinions expressed on the following paid commercial program are those of the host and guests and do not represent the opinion of KMBZ or Entercom Kansas City. Hey, and we're back. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. And I am here every Sunday from 11 to noon trying to give you a little better handle on how some of the mechanical systems in your house work or if you're a do-it-yourselfer maybe we can help you out with projects that you've got going on around the house or if or if you're none of the above maybe i I think a lot of people just listen to the show because they want to hear about uh, new products that maybe they would like to incorporate in their house things that weren't available when the house was built well like like the uh, wi-fi communicating uh, honeywell thermostat i was talking about this morning 
Anyway, whatever the reason you're listening, we're glad that you're here. We got one open line if you'd like to grab it. Uh, give us a holler right now and you'll get a line for sure. Our number is 576-7798. And let's get back to the phones here and we'll start with uh, John. Hi, John. What can I do for you? Hi, Dick. How are you doing? I'm great. Yeah, the whole thing about Lake of the Ozarks yeah. mm-hmm. um, thing, it's a good idea, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of things that go on with that, and it, it it's a good idea. Yeah. But also, you know, those homes down there, they don't have any codes. Yeah. They need work, though. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that. <laughs> you know, and, when I first down to, moved down to Lewisburg, I w- moved out to the country, and I just loved it. And I started uh, seeing some of the things that were done out there. I mean, they you, like you said, they don't have any codes, and you s- see stuff that just make you want to cry. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> well, again, there's no codes. There's temper uh, temperature differential down on the lake, mm-hmm. especially Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah. Again, there's no codes. Yeah. Um, a lot of the drains are in septic tanks. Um, a lot of the people aren't down there for any type of the year. Yeah, pretty short um, time. They yeah. need to insulate the pipes a little different. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of things. The, those houses need to be plumbed very, very much different than, let's say, you know, a house in Overland Park. You know, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you have you have different considerations. I don't know that they need to be plumbed any differently than up here. Uh, but is I mean, there are different considerations. If you're away from a house when there's when you have freezing temperatures, you definitely have to worry about whether or not your furnace is on and keeping the house warm. Because if the house freezes, you can end up with major damage. That's all I was saying with this thermostat. Sure, sure, the, but. But a Warsbo pipe will expand and contract, and it won't bust. Yeah. Or then, if yeah. we're talking about M or, you know, L, copper, you know. Yeah. Now, um, copper will split like a gourd. And you're right. If you have PEX pipe. Or if you're using pipe, M or L, it, you know. It'll split and freeze like a gourd. Steel pipe will sometimes. Copper pipe, when it gets cold, boy, it'll split. Uh M is the type that's used most of the time in residential, L and commercial buildings, and they'll both split like crazy when it gets cold. But it's just, you know, if you have PEX pipe, then usually it won't break when it freezes, but I've seen it it freeze and break too. So anyway, it's just a good idea to know what the temperature is in your lake house. Uh, I, I thought it was a neat product. No, anyway. it's all, all good. Um, anyway, there's no codes down there. So, I mean, you know, when it when it gets cold on the lake, and specifically Lake of the Ozarks, and mm. I grew up on Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah. Um, there's a different, There again, there's no codes, but y- you want a different construction philosophy. Uh yeah. Building your house down there. Um, yeah. Well, I don't. You I mean, want to keep what it all cons- inside. You want to keep your plumbing stuff inside. Yeah. If you will, you you don't want to keep it outside of the house. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever construction philosophy you used, if you if if the furnace goes off and the water's on, you got a big problem. No matter well, how you construct no, it. Well, no, this is true. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep the you want to keep it heated, um, and there's nothing wrong with. And we have several friends that have the exact same system that you're talking about, and yeah. it's a good idea. Um, you know, it's second man's house down somewhere, you yeah. know. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway. Well, anyway, I appreciate your comments, John. I got to run, right. got other calls to get here, but I appreciate you All giving right. us a holler this morning. All righty, that opens the line if you'd like to join us. We actually got a couple open lines here. All you got to do is pick up the phone, give us a holler right now, 576-7798. 
And let's see here. We're going to talk to Mike next. Hello, Mike. What can I do for you? Uh, Dick, I enjoy your show a lot. Thank you. Um, I got a letter from a company called HomeServe, and they uh, uh, guarantee the line from the from the water meter to your house, or if, if it breaks, they'll fix oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I have. That This is something that's been going on the last, I don't know, five years or something. It, you, basically, there is an insurance company or maybe more than one that's selling insurance policies to homeowners, and they do it on sewers and on water lines. Now, mm-hmm. the, the water line, and what they, basically what they say, like on the water lines, what you're talking about, they say, hey, if you have a problem with the water line between the meter out in your front yard and where it comes into the house, and, of course, that's your responsibility. The city won't take care of that. This insurance policy says, hey, if you have a leak in that line, we'll take care of it, uh, up right. to a certain dollar limit usually. Now, you know, I've talked to a lot of people over the last few years that have exactly same question you do should i buy this usually the insurance is pretty cheap it only costs about 50 bucks a year i think right 60 and, bucks yep yep and and yet here's my thoughts after talking to a whole lot of people i have discovered that the insurance companies that are mail out the these policies they are not stupid and they are mailing these policy solicitations out mainly to neighborhoods where the houses are of the age that the underground water line to the house uh, is going to be type K, heavy copper, which will outlive you and me, even if we live 200 years old. And so my advice is if you live in a house and if you look at the pipe where it comes through the basement wall and it's copper pipe, I say, yeah, well, it's not very much money, but shoot, your chances of ever collecting on that policy are almost zero. On the other hand, if you live in a part of town, you know, the house built before the, you know, in the 50s or before and the water line coming through the wall is steel pipe, eh, now you have a real possibility that that line will break. Those old water lines rust and and eventually it will get a hole in it and you'll have to replace the line. So that would be a different scenario. But I don't think those insurance companies mail mail those solicitations of those older houses very much. Well, in my particular case, my water line is several hundred feet long. And it is copper, but uh, I've always worried about it being that long, uh, yeah. you know, as to what would happen. Well, they the claim other, it's $300 to dig it up and replace it, you know, up, up where, the, where it freezes or something. And it isn't going to freeze unless it's awful darn shallow. Right. You know, but, I but mean, being that long, actually something like 500 feet long, it's, it's ridiculous, but I, I yeah. do have one that long. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. My my water line for my spring to my house is a quarter of a mile long. So okay, I, I know so what you mean. that's and, what made me worry. Uh, you know, the think it might be sixty dollars a year. Yeah, uh, it might be a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. That's one you'll have to answer for yourself. Okay. I say if but you have these, a, are these companies legitimate? I mean, uh, I think so. I mean, I think so. I mean, a lot of times the letters they send out are come from an an envelope. Uh, God, the the I think the city of Prairie Village was mailing these letters out. I, I don't know why the city government's getting involved in the sale well, of insurance policy. this is a private company, policy. it says. And, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's well, the, Jeff City, but... Well, yeah, you know. they're always private companies, but the, 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 I saw a letter went out to a customer of mine. This was five years ago, and it, and it was signed by the mayor, I think, and the mayor was recommending that you buy this policy. I don't know if the city was getting a cut or what. So, yeah. kind of, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a question you'll have to answer for yourself. You know, if you get a catastrophic failure in a water line and water is squirting up out of the ground, those leaks are real easy to find, and you can go right down to it, find it, and fix the leak. On the other hand, if you have a 500 foot water line and all you have is a water bill that's double what it used to be, but it's not a big enough leak that there's any water on the surface of the ground. Those can be all but impossible to find, and if that happens, you end up sometimes just replacing the whole line because you don't know where to look for the darn leak cause, just because it's a small leak. So, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what my, uh, my concern was. How much does it cost to, to, to replace a 500-foot water line, approximately? Oh, man. I, I, you know, like a, a, a line into a house is, oh, if it's 100 feet long, 
get a backhoe out there and get you know all the permits and coppers gone through the roof that's still what we yeah. use on those short lines it's i don't know four or five thousand dollars i suppose mm-hmm. and if you have well, a, okay i appreciate your help then you betcha appreciate Thank the call you. All righty, that opens the line if you'd like to join us. Our number, 576-7798. Got a couple of open lines here, 576-7798. It's often difficult to get an open line during the show. People call me during the week a lot of times just saying, hey, I tried to get in and I couldn't. And with that in mind, uh, I've I've done this for years now. I'm going to do the same thing again here right now. And what I'm going to do is give you an invitation for you to call me really any time during the week that you want to, not just during this show. If you're working on something and you need a little free advice on some project that you're working on, uh, you can call me whenever you want to, and you don't need to feel like you're imposing on me. That's not the way I look at it, certainly. You can call me after 5 o'clock at night. You can call me on Saturday. You can call me on Sunday. And I really don't mind, and I'm serious about this. Uh, In all honesty, a lot of the calls that I do get after hours are from somebody that wants me to come out and do the work for them. They either don't have the time or they just don't want to mess around with it, so they'll call me to do the work. And, of course, I like that because that's how I make my living. But I am being completely sincere when I say uh, that I absolutely don't mind you calling, even if all you need is a little free advice on some do-it-yourself project that you're working on yourself and I will do my best to help you tell you anything that I know to help your project go better to help it be completed uh, easier Uh, and I'm very easy to get in touch with because my normal business telephone rings straight to my cell phone after normal business hours so really all you have to do is remember that one number and I'm going to give it to you here so you can jot it down for future reference or emergencies or whatever the number is 913-888-0550. Uh, I, I make this offer sincerely, and you'll find that when you call me and you got a drippy faucet washer and it's, you know, Friday night at 7 o'clock, I'm not going to dismiss you and be mad. I, I learned a long time ago that what goes around comes around, and you're never going to get hurt by being nice to people. It always comes back to you sooner or later. Anyway, I give out a lot of free advice and information to a lot of people, and people, and I do it willingly. So don't hesitate to use the number. Again, the number is 913-888-0550. And with that, uh, going to get back to the phones here. We do have a couple open lines. Number is 576-7798. And we will talk to Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. What can I do for you? Jennifer, are you there? Jennifer, Jennifer, (laughs) oh, come on now, no Jennifer, okay, well, we'll, we will move on here, call me back, Jennifer, okay, Uh, let's talk to Erica, looks like Erica's in Lewisburg, that's where I live, hi, Erica, how are you? Dick, it's Eric, not Eric. Oh, Erica. Eric. Okay, sorry about it. This sounds like somebody I know, too, which I ought to know you if you live in Lewisburg. <laughs> you you know me. It's your favorite Ultra Flush band. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to call in. We've been listening to the show in response to that first caller that was really negative on the wireless thermostats. Yeah. I'm familiar with them, and they're, they're a great product. And, you know, to his note on the lack of codes in the lake of the ozark area yeah i've lived down there with my family a long time and um you know that's even more of a reason to have you know the extra security knowing okay if your house is lacking a little bit in construction quality at least you do know that the furnace is operating correctly yeah Yeah, that's a good point eric and and things of that nature you know what it you know you can have the best builder and the best engineering in the world but a furnace can still fail a mccurn a furnace will fail not yep. can it will fail a furnace is a mechanical device you can have the best furnace or heat pump that known to mankind and it but it's a mechanical device and it will fail sooner or later and you know i, I never told you this Eric. you've been to my house i know who you are shoot uh you know my house and i um 
when I built my house 15 years ago, we didn't have this Wi-Fi technology. Didn't even have Wi-Fi, I suppose, back then. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, I put in... Uh, Honeywell has always been the best of the best in control systems for heating and cooling systems. And back then, Honeywell had something called a telephone access module, which was basically the same kind of a deal, only you could not talk to your thermostat over the Internet uh, because that technology wasn't around then. But you could call on the telephone and talk to your thermostat by pushing buttons on the phone and you could check the temperature in your house and change the setting. And anyway, I've still got that system installed at my house. I don't use it anymore, but it's there. I believe it. And you know, these, the new thermostats, these Wi-Fi thermostats, heck, they don't cost like, I don't know, 20 bucks more than a, than a regular non-Wi-Fi thermostat. I really think that probably won't be very long before the old non-Wi-Fi communicating thermostats are gone completely. I think everything eventually will be this. Yeah, or at least have the, the enabled capability to do it. I mean, the other neat thing is, you know, they make different things now. It's, you know, it's all kind of grouped into what you could almost consider home, home automation, but, yeah. you know, yeah. as simple as, some light receptacles, you know, little plug modules that plug in, and then you plug your light into those that are also connected to your Wi-Fi network, and you can control some lamps and different appliances, you know, yeah. from afar as well if you want to turn a light on every now and again for security reasons. Yeah. You may have to have your – if you if you're like – I'm an old fart, you know me. But anyway, if you're an old fart like me, you might have to have your grandchildren come over and operate the system for you, you know. You're... Yep. <laughs> it happens. I, I do have a, uh, a a good question though to ask okay. you that you might you might be able to help me with. Uh, yeah, what's that? In, in regards to my recent home purchase. Yeah. Um, looking at the the washer and dryer, where originally it's a ranch, you know, single level living on the main floor. Yeah. But at one point, the dryer was in the basement. Um, yeah. You know, it's a lower level entry garage, so there's plenty of access and whatnot. Uh, to get a washer and dryer down there, and you yeah. can tell that the original owner had the dryer down there. Yeah, there down in the washers, basement. Right. Yeah. There are washer hookups, but my question is, if I can't find any stubs in the slab for the washer drain, where do traditionally the floor drains drain to in a in a in a slab in the basement? Oh. I mean, it it either goes down through the through the concrete floor and drains under the floor, or the other way to do it, which is much easier, which you could probably add this: find another drain stack. Uh, a lot of times the they'll put the laundry right under the kitchen sink area, and so here comes the kitchen sink drain down the basement uh, wall, Eric. And and really, you cut that kitchen sink drain, put a T in there and a P-trap and a laundry standpipe, and boom, you've got a laundry drain down. Okay, yeah, and it is. Where the, dryer, where the dryer was sitting is right below the kitchen sink. Okay, so that's well, that's an easy, cool. easy job. Good deal. Well, hey, I'll let you run. I appreciate the advice. Like I said, I just I wanted to call back on the on the thermostat because yeah. it's, I think it's a great fail safe. You know. Yeah. Even, even you know, one of the problems, and I have this problem. You know, shoot, I'm getting old, and you know, and I try not and be this way, but I know that I still am, even though I don't try not to be, and that is. You know, you just don't like change. You don't like new stuff, and I'm 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 resistant to things that are new. I know I am, although I, you know, I th- I really think this Wi-Fi thermostat is a neat deal. But on other things, I'm not so receptive. I know just because of my age. <laughs> anyway, appreciate the call, Eric. All right, have a good day, Dick. You bet. I'll see ya. All righty, we got an open line. If you'd like to join us, all you got to do is pick up the phone, our number 576-7798. And let's see, let's talk to Lynn. Hi, Lynn, what can I do for you? Well, hi, I'm, I've got a problem with my fireplace. Okay. And um, um, about eight, seven years back, I had it all redone. I put in... Uh, uh, the firebox inside, I could see uh, that some of the uh, bricks were 
were coming loose and everything. And so I thought, well, I, since uh, the house was probably 10 years old when I bought it in okay. 87. Okay. And uh, anyway, I had uh, was filling the firebox with uh, logs to build a fire, and all the bricks started falling down from the top down. Oh, really? And the bricks from the uh, bottom uh, were not bothered at all. And so I had quite a few companies come out and give me estimates on yeah. what was going on. Yeah. And then uh, they told me I should turn it into my insurance company because there's definitely hail and damage on there. Hail damage? Did that to your fireplace? Yeah, it did it to my chimney. Oh, really? You know, and uh, while and I was mowing one day, and I found a bunch of shingles in my yard, and so oh, you, the exterior of your fireplace, the, the bricks. Exterior of my oh, fireplace. Oh, okay. I thought they were falling down on the inside of the chimney. I I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The so water had been leaking down the the chimney behind the bricks in the fireplace where we couldn't see it and didn't notice it and uh we're using it because i had a new metal insert put in and uh had it all redone really nice and uh and anyway uh we had a terrible storm i think it was in 2009 yeah. uh and that uh, we had uh, 50 mile an hour steady winds with 70 mile an hour gusts. Yeah, I thought my windows were going to blow out. Yeah, is that when you had the hail? And we, yeah, and had God, hail. you know the problem I can see. Can you imagine the phone conversation when you call up your insurance company that you had in 2009? Keep in mind, that's four years ago, and you say, "Hey, I got a claim to file on something that happened four years ago." Ah, that could be the toughest part about what you're talking about. I mean, if if we had a hailstorm last week or last month or two months ago, it'd be a lot easier conversation. But anyway. Well, I I did call them. I called them when I saw the uh, shingles in the yard, um, and then I even had you know it was a, such a bad storm that we had these drive-by uh, people who would. Uh, see that there were shingles missing. Oh, yeah. Pull up in the yard and, hey, you you're, you need a new roof. Uh, yeah. I give you an estimate. And so I gave them an estimate, and then I called my insurance company. They sent the gesture out two times. Okay. Both times they denied that uh, it uh, was hurt by hail. Yeah. Enough to oh, boy. I don't envy you. Did you have a question for for me? I'm not going to claim to be an expert on chimneys, that's for sure. But did you have a question for me? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, my my question is that uh, if the insurance company is denying the claim, they say that it's due to uh, wear and tear over the yeah. years. And I'm trying to get them to understand that uh, it's, happened after the storm and yeah. uh, the hail and you i've got pictures and the whole nine yards of well you know what my recommendation is you've had chimney experts out looking at this and it sounds like they all pretty much agreed that this was caused by hail damage what you do is you call up your insurance adjuster and say you know i want to i don't i want to settle this peacefully you say this was caused by you know normal wear and tear but i've had experts at chimneys come out and look at it they all agree it's hail damage i don't want to start a big ruckus over this but i expect you to pay for this and if you don't i will hire an attorney and I mean, the, the worst thing in the world is get an attorney involved in it because it costs them more money, costs you more money, and it creates ill feelings. But well, anyway, hey, I, I'm out of time here, uh, Len. I've got a, I got, I hate to do this, but I got to hang up on you because I'm out of time. Okie doke. Okie doke. Good talking to you. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if uh, you weren't able to get in today, don't hesitate to use that number, 913 888 0550, enjoy the weather. We got some rain coming. This is Kansas.